in the presence of the Vice President of the Supreme Council for the Environment, Vice President of the Supreme Authority of the Russian Equestrian and Horse Racing Club and member of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports. His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club, organized this afternoon the second race of the season. The race was held for the Cups of the Gulf Petrochemical Industry Company, GPIC, and the Cup of the late Abdel Hadi Al Arfu. The events took place at the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club racetrack in Rafa and Sakhir. The race was attended by a number of their highnesses, representatives of the race, sponsors, and an audience of horse racing enthusiasts. The winners were crowned as the Chief Executive Officer of the Gulf Petrochemical Industries Company. Yasser Abdurrahim Al Abbasi presented the GPIC Cup for the second round to the winning owner, Salah Abdul Latif, and the GPIC Cup for the sixth round to the winning owner, Muhammad Khaled Abdurrahim. He also presented the GPIC Cup for the seventh round to the racer Alan Smith, while the general manager of Al Afu Company, Abdul Rad Al Afu, presented the cup of the late Abdul Hadi Al Afu to His Highness Sheikh Sultan Al Din bin Muhammad bin Salman Al Khalifa. The race consisted of eight rounds. من السيد عبد الرضا العفو مدير عام شركة العفو يقدم كأس المرحوم عبد الهادي العفو إلى سمو الشيخ سلطان الدين بن محمد آل خليفة إذا ألف مبروك هذا الفوز وهذا الانتصار في الشيء يقام هنا على نادي راشد Organized by the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Racing Federation, the international and local endurance qualifying races will begin for the new season 2023-2024 at the Bahrain International Endurance Village. It is expected that the races will witness wide participation. The village will also host the international endurance race for 100 and 120 kilometer races and local qualifying races for 120 kilometers, 100 kilometers, 40 kilometers, and 80 kilometers, where the winning riders in the 120 kilometers open international race will be crowned. The Federation organized the veterinary examination of the horses, the process of numbering the horses, in addition to the weight of the participating riders. A competition for the best horse condition for the local endurance race for a distance of 120 kilometers will also be organized under the patronage of the captain of Al Fursan team. Her Highness Sheikh Hanoura bint Hamad Al Khalifa. The award comes within the framework of Her Highness Sheikh Hanoura bint Hamad Al Khalifa's keenness to continue the advancement of Bahraini endurance sports, which has witnessed prosperity and growth in the recent period after a series of international achievements. The Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Mubarak bin Dana, affirmed that the government of Bahrain places the preservation of biodiversity among its environmental priorities, indicating that work continues in accordance with global efforts to tackle the various challenges. The minister also noted the vital role of the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, in supporting the efforts of the member states in international agreements aimed at achieving environmental security for all. This came within the framework of the organization of the first introductory workshop by the Supreme Council for the Environment in cooperation with the United Nations Development Program for the post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework Project. Minister Bindana explained that the project aims primarily to support proactive action to preserve biodiversity globally, stressing in this regard the importance of strengthening joint action between the public and private sectors, as well as civil society, to achieve the project objectives that are parallel with the Sustainable Development Goals. The unified Saudi government platform, Nusuk, launched by the Ministry of Hajj and Umrah in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, concluded its introductory meeting in the Kingdom of Bahrain, which was inaugurated by the Saudi Minister of Hajj and Umrah, Dr. Tawfiq bin Fawzan al rabia in the presence of the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowment, Nawaf bin Muhammad al maouda and the Minister of Industry and Trade, Abdullah bin Adil Fakhru. The meeting aimed to introduce the partners in the Kingdom of Bahrain to the services provided by the Saudi platform to serve those visiting Mecca and Medina. The exhibition also included pavilions for service providers in Saudi Arabia, including hotels, transportation services, organizing trips and others with the aim of serving pilgrims and enriching their religious and cultural experience in order to achieve the goals of Saudi Vision 
2030. The Kingdom of Bahrain has urged the international community to shoulder its humanitarian responsibilities in responding to the resolution of the United Nations General Assembly, adopted by a majority of 121 countries against the backdrop of the unfortunate situation in the Gaza Strip and its grave humanitarian repercussions, which calls for immediate, lasting and sustainable ceasefire, leading to a cessation of hostilities and immediate action to preserve the lives and property and the security and stability of the region. The statements were made by the permanent representative of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the United Nations in New York, Ambassador Jamal Faris Arwey, while addressing the 10th Emergency Special Session of the UN General Assembly on illegal Israeli actions in the occupied East Jerusalem and the rest of the occupied Palestinian territories. The permanent representative said that the adoption of the General Resolution by the General Assembly reflects the world's demands to take action to stop the war and that it is time to respond to these demands, calling for greater efforts to achieve a permanent ceasefire that guarantees the safety and security of all the parties working to implement the resolutions of international legitimacy on the Palestinian issue, as well as supporting the Palestinian National Authority and the Palestine Liberation Organization as the sole legitimate representative of the Palestinian people. He noted that priority must be given to the protection of civilians on both sides of the conflict in these conditions, and that the international community should not hesitate to condemn any action that leads to the loss of innocent lives, especially standing against the killing of children and women, as death and destruction will not solve the fundamental issue, but will create anger and vengeful generations. Ambassador Arawea underlined the importance of continued diplomatic efforts by all the regional and international parties to de-escalate the situation through an immediate ceasefire, the end of military operations, the protection of innocent civilians on both the Palestinian and Israeli sides, and the release of all the prisoners, hostages, and detainees, as well as the cessation of any practices that could lead to an increase in the cycle of violence. The permanent representative said the Kingdom of Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the directives of the government led by His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa affirms that the two-state solution is the only peaceful mean because there will be no stability in the Middle East without securing the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people in order to reach a just, comprehensive and sustainable peace in the region. The Council of Representatives expresses deepest thanks, appreciation, gratitude and support for the Kingdom of Bahrain's firm and unwavering historical position in supporting the Palestinian cause and the legitimate rights of the brotherly Palestinian people and what was emphasized in the statement issued by the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister who affirmed what was stated in the statement of the Representatives Council issued this morning regarding the return of the Ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain in Tel Aviv to the Kingdom, as well as the departure of the Israeli Ambassador from the Kingdom, in addition to the cessation of direct flights between Bahrain International Airport and Tel Aviv Airport. The Council praised with all pride and honor the sublime royal approach of His Majesty the King and the support and follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in enhancing security and stability, consolidating peace and finding a just solution to the Palestinian issue, leading to a two-state solution in accordance with the Arab Peace 
initiative in a way that guarantees the right of the brotherly Palestinian people to establish their independent state with East Jerusalem as its capital. The Council noted that the Bahraini position, both official and popular, emphasizes the necessity of stopping the aggression in Gaza, protecting the lives of civilians in accordance with international humanitarian law, working to secure humanitarian corridors, sparring the region the repercussions of violence, and supporting the Palestinian cause and the legitimate rights of the brotherly Palestinian people. The 9th SDMX Global Conference themed Empowering Data Communities successfully wrapped up after three days of enriching discussions. The conference was organized by the Information and E-Government Authority in collaboration with 10 international organizations. Over the course of the two days, the workshops introduced participants to the fundamentals of SDMX, providing hands-on guidance. The primary objective was to help attendees understand the core concepts of SDMX and equip them with the skills they need to design, model, and disseminate statistical data tables. Participants in the beginner track learned valuable SDMX skills such as data modeling and how to create a complete data structure definition, allowing them to model and disseminate a statistical data table by the end of their training. Under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Works and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the third stage of His Majesty's Amateur Cycling Tour Competition was held in its third edition, organized by the Bahrain Cycling Federation and in cooperation with Fa'aliyat Company. The third stage witnessed wide participation from amateur riders from Bahrain and various countries of the world. The race was 155 kilometers, starting from the capital, Manama, and passing through the kingdom's tourist and important landmarks in various governorates. The president of the Bahrain Cycling Federation, Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and representatives of the endorsing companies crowned the champions of the third stage, in which cyclist Abdullah Ali was able to achieve first place in the Bahrain category, while cyclist Adil Barbari won first place in the Gulf and the national team category. The Kingdom of Bahrain witnessed rain in varying amounts of abundance over various governorates and regions. The relevant security directorate at the Interior Ministry have made intensive efforts following the rainfall, including regulating traffic and dealing with cases received by the main operations room. The operations directorate, in coordination with the police directorates of the four governorates, the general directorate of traffic and the general directorate of civil defense, has taken on-site procedures to help citizens and residents deal with rain-related cases, including rainwater gathering areas. The traffic patrols dealt with various cases, including 43 accidents with minor damages, pulling broken down vehicles and regulating traffic on main roads and intersections. They were also involved in traffic diversions and monitoring traffic flow. The civil defense team dealt with various cases, including 50 cases related to falling trees, lampposts, sage, and short circuits. The rainwater was pumped out in cooperation with the Ministry of Municipalities, Affairs, and Agriculture and the Ministry of Works. Meanwhile, the Coast Guard called upon seafarers to be cautious and follow instructions. The General Directorate of Media and Security Culture carried out its awareness role through the Police Media Center website and social media to urge the public to be cautious and follow the rain-related instructions. The second Bahraini aid shipment to Gaza arrived at Al Arish International Airport in Egypt to be delivered to the Egyptian Red Crescent, which will then be handed over to the Palestinian Red Crescent and the Gaza Strip to be distributed to hospitals. The Royal Humanitarian Foundation Secretary General Mustafa Al Sayed affirmed that the second shipment included 40 tons of medical food and relief materials to assist Palestinians and alleviate their suffering. The Bahraini National Committee for Supporting the Palestinian People in Gaza had held a meeting in which it discussed post aid measures which include development projects for health, education and livelihood. It has been agreed to build a field hospital and residential complex during Gaza's reconstruction in addition to other developmental projects. The President of the United Arab Emirates, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, held a phone call with the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, Mark Rutte, to discuss efforts to strengthen the response to worsening humanitarian conditions at the Gaza Strip. 
Both sides also touched upon the impact of the military escalation and recent developments in Gaza on regional and international stability and security. Furthermore, the two sides discussed the urgent need for the international community to act to advance a ceasefire to halt the bloodshed and protect the civilian lives and ensure the delivery of critical humanitarian relief, as well as work towards establishing a clear political horizon for a just, comprehensive and sustainable peace that ensures the stability and security of the broader region. Additionally, the phone call addressed relations between the United Arab Emirates and the Netherlands, wherein the two sides underscored their shared keenness to expand cooperation to serve the mutual interests of both countries. The red, white, green and black will be fluttering from windows, rooftops and flagposts on Sunday as the United Arab Emirates national banner adorns homes and is raised ceremonially in schools and government offices across the country in celebration of the Flag Day. This national event, launched in November 2013, marks the anniversary of His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed's accession as President of the Nation. Every year on November the 3rd, people across the UAE renew their allegiance, love and dedication to the country's flag. The government has called on all ministries, schools and institutions to raise the UAE flag at 11 a.m. on Sunday as a show of solidarity with the union established by the country's founding fathers. In essence, flags are a significant part of identity and values. The UAE's flag was designed by Emirati Abdullah al-Ma'ina in 1971 when he was just 19 years old. Since then, the UAE flag has been respected, revered and recognized all over the world. It was stood atop the world's tallest building and highest mountain, reached outer space and has been seen across the land. The third edition of the International Cybersecurity Forum concluded in the Saudi capital Riyadh. The forum organized and brought in experts from 120 countries worldwide. Over the course of the two days, the forum addressed key strategic trends and vital international issues in cyberspace. Participants from around the globe discussed cooperation prospects, consolidating efforts, maximizing opportunities in the sector, knowledge transfer, and localizing human and technical capabilities. The forum covered the broad spectrum of cybersecurity topics through 35 discussion sessions involving decision makers, CEOs, and senior officials from both local and international public and private sectors. These discussions focused on cybersecurity aspects related to geopolitical, economic, and behavioral facets that fall within the priorities of public sectors, governmental and non-governmental organizations, think tanks, research institutions, and major companies globally. Several memorandums of understanding were signed during the forum between the National Cybersecurity Authority, NCA, and various regional and international entities to collaborate in the cybersecurity domain. The Literature, Publishing and Translation Commission in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia launched the Saudi Culture Exhibition in Paris, France. The Commission has prepared a program full of partnerships with the Heritage Authority, the Libraries Authority, the Music Authority, the Culinary Arts Authority, the Architecture and Design Arts Authority, the Fashion Authority and the Film Authority. In addition to the Prince Mohammed bin Salman International Center for Arabic Calligraphy. The Saudi participation aims to highlight the most important creative fields of Saudi Arabia and market them globally within the framework of the Ministry of Culture's keenness to emphasize international cultural exchange as one of its strategic goals within the Vision 2030 of Saudi Arabia. The exhibition, which continues until November the 10th, consists of a number of events and activities that represent Saudi culture and its various components. <laughs> 